Good morning, Floss Tube. My name is Laura, and I'd like to welcome you to Stitching by the Shore, my channel all about cross stitch with a little bit of paper crafting thrown in. If you are new, I want to say welcome. Thank you so very much for pressing play. I hope you like what you see and you'll hit like and subscribe. And if you're a returning stitching friend, thank you so much for coming back and uh, talking stitching with me and sharing this journey of cross stitching and paper crafting and all sorts of crafting along the way. So I really do appreciate it, so thank you. Before we get started with the stitching, I do wanna say I have so many of you, so many of you in my thoughts and my prayers. First, my Canadian friends, last weekend was very, very rough for you. I hope everyone is well and safe uh, after those storms moved through there. And then obviously, as Ian has come up through the Gulf, um, those of you who are in Florida, uh, I'm thinking about you. We have a lot of cross stitchers there, I think. So I am thinking of you and I'm thinking of your families. If you may be somewhere else and you're trying to reach family or, you know, have family there, I'm thinking of all of you with there. And now, of course, this thing just doesn't want to quit. And uh, so my friends in Georgia and my friends in South Carolina, I'm... I was disheartened to see that it had become a hurricane again, so I'm thinking about you and hoping all is safe and well. I was asked about whether or not we would be affected. Uh, I am in Delaware, for those of you who don't know, so we will get very fringe, fringe effects. It, it always amazes me when they show the storm and then they show how far out some of these storms, how many hundreds of miles away some of these storms affect. So we are slated to get heavier rains, um, I think possibly starting tonight through the weekend. And the wind is tough to tell. We're windy because I live in Rehoboth, so we're by the beach. And so we're always kind of windy anyway. But it is very, very dark and gloomy and cloudy this morning. So we will get some, but certainly nothing like so many of you are experiencing. So I'm thinking of all of you and just keeping you uh, in my thoughts as this weekend progresses. Okay, so let's do some stitching. I have quite a few projects that I touched this week. I have no finishes, which means you know I, I didn't finish the big giant project that I was so close to finishing. Uh, last weekend, for those of you, and I'll talk about what we did in life and everything, but last weekend was my, last Sunday was my anniversary, and we made a weekend out of it. <laughs> and we stayed home, but we kind of did all sorts of stuff for the weekend. So Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, I got very little stitching. I, I got a little bit. I did try to stitch every day, but not a lot. And on Friday, I usually get a little bit less because it's filming day. So... I got a little bit behind on, I always start, for some reason, I always start my Halloween calendar project later on in the week. I don't know why I don't start it earlier. Normally it's fine, but this week, because we were so busy and doing some fun stuff, I just didn't get to it. So that's all right. Next week, I'll have a lot of mini finishes. But this is my probably my oldest project to date at this point that has been started and needs to get finished, and that's Kringle's. This is Little House Needlework, and I am making it a two-story building as opposed to a three-story building, and I am still working on... <laughs> I know some of you really like to see this, so I, I, I'm showing it, although it's structure I'm still working on. I am doing all of the structure before I fill in the rooms, and so sometimes it really doesn't look like I've done much, even if I've added four or five hundred stitches. <laughs> So here it is. That's where it is. This is done on an 18 count Artemis from Bestitch Me. And I am working on the bottom half of the structure. I've, I've had the top done for quite some time and then it sat and sat and sat for a while. So now I've pulled it back out. So I've been really focusing, finishing, I have like five, maybe 10 stitches left, but all of the outer structure I think is done in this room, except for the chandelier. Uh, and then, you know, I added some floor, some leaf-like things over and just more structure. And that's what I will continue to do. And then I can have the fun, fun job of figuring out what I want to do for the rooms. So that's where it is. No, it won't be done this Christmas, but we're just plugging away. I think it'll be cute when it's done. So that's Kringles. I don't know what I'm going to do 
color-wise on either side here. There are snowflakes in the example there, but they're very hard to see. And I'm not sure the charted color will show up on here. So we'll play around with that when I get to it. And I'll let you know. So that's Pringles. That's the first one. Okay. I did have a new start though. I'm going to try to do this softly. I put a little bit something there to catch some of my projects. You know, I finished my spring Quaker and I really, really, really enjoyed mono, the monochromatic aspect of that piece so much that I said I would like to have at least one, one monochromatic going at any given time. Maybe more if I do the crow for the October stitching, I might have a couple going. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't wait. I was so excited to give this one a try and start it. So it is Jardin Privé and it is the summer Quaker. So it's a very small picture, but there will be four seasons. Each one is coming out as the season starts this year. So autumn has come out. Very hard to see here. That is it in a small batch and I did place an order for it. So I decided to get the hard copy of it. I wavered between that and getting the digital. But in the end, I was doing a little bit of shopping and I said, you know what, I saw it, so I picked it up. So that'll be coming. But right now we're concentrating on summer. And if you're new, I'm doing all four of them on different color fabrics with the same floss. So it's floss number 823, which is a deep navy blue. And there it is. This is 18 count and it's called My Sunshine from Bestitch Me. It's a Bestitch Me sort of day for the first set of projects that you'll see. And then we come on up and that's what I did so far. So I'm not necessarily a sampler girl for stitching for myself. I love watching others stitch them and I love seeing them come out. They're beautiful. But I generally, you won't, you won't see a lot of them here. <laughs> and sometimes I have, I take the alphabet out, whoops. But um, if I do stitch some of these things, but this one, I love every part of this, including the alphabet. So they will all have the alphabet stitched in them. This one does have the 2022 date. And I think looking closely, so does, so spring didn't. It looks like both summer and autumn fall have 2022. So even though they won't necessarily, this one could be finished in 2022, but even if, I, I don't even know if fall will be started this year, but I will put that date just because it's a project that I, I can, conceived of doing and started in this year. So I will continue with that. And I don't think the winter one has one either. So it's kind of symmetrical. The ends don't have it, but that's it. And so I, I ended up, this is how I ended up cutting my, uh, my sunshine fabric, the where the place there were some orange patches. It, it's very light. I tried to do the best I could to get a little bit of it, that in there. I'm not sure the camera picks it up so much, but it does show up a little bit in person. I think for autumn, I will be doing a shade of orange, probably more peachy as opposed to maybe super bright. So it will have, it's, it's time to have more orange. I just thought this was so bright and cheerful and perfect for a summer piece. And given that it's just the one color, I think that color is gonna look good all the way through. So that's it. That is Summer Quaker, Jardin Privé. Alrighty. I, I don't necessarily, I have no plans to necessarily stitch on that every week, but I really enjoy it. There's some times where I like the ease of the one color. And I mean, with all these little motifs and parts, you can, you can kind of do a little bit and feel accomplished because you have finished a little bit. So... I could see myself if I don't know what I want to stitch and I'm flipping through, which is how I generally pick each day what I'm going to stitch. Um, I could see myself grabbing that even though I wasn't necessarily thinking about doing it on a given week. So we'll see. 
All right, next. So this week I worked on two different full coverage pieces because I finished up my 10 days on one. And then I, near the end of, my weeks are Friday to Friday for filming, right? So when I say near the end of my week, that's what I mean. Um, I was able to pick up a second one, which you'll see later on. So you know the first, oh my, my piles here. Everyone always talks about their piles getting ready to fall over, but it it's it's really no joke. All of this stuff gets a little bit starts to see. You start to see the piece slide down, and you're like, oh no, it's all gonna end up on the floor. So I showed you this last week. There's a little bit more done on Mini Paris Morning. It's charted by Heaven and Earth Designs, and the artwork is by Uliana Babenko. My favorite part's the dog, which I'm nowhere near. <laughs> Upper left corner is generally, yeah, left corner is where I start things. So that's why you'll see all of my full coverages with the upper left corner going. <laughs> this is 18 count white Ada. It's two strands over one full cross. And so I've I've gotten into the habit lately I of wanting to stitch all the way across to get my piece just across on the top. And so that was a bit of a focus for me this week. I did, I think mostly what I did was continue. I finished the blue and then over here now we will have the other half of the curtain. So it starts, you don't get as much of that light, light pink on this side, but you have a bunch of light pink and then it goes into some of the deeper pinks. And I think along the way then I also did, I might have done some in here as well. I don't, I did look when I was stitching these pinks to see if I had any single stitches over here, but this side of the curtain is a, is a bit darker. So it didn't really have any of those light pinks in there. So this is going to be the, I mean, remember there's three inch more, uh, margins, but that's the, that's going to be the size of it when we're done. It's a much, much later date. <laughs> But that's where it is now. So this one will go away now um, until the next, I don't have a set rotation. It just seems how now, how I've been working on them. I put this one away and then I go to the next one that I haven't stitched in the longest amount of time. There are a couple of full coverages that are not in that rotation that I need to get back in. but. There's some that I'm really, really enjoying the colors and the parts of that I keep just wanting to stitch those. I don't want to give up on the other ones, but I'm just not feeling it right now. It'll come. I know it will. Okay, next. So this is just a small black and white picture of this one. Um, it's called Thanksgiving Quote with Sunflower. And it is from Luba Davies Atelier from, I don't know if I'm saying that right, from Etsy. As always, everything is linked down below, so there will be a direct link to their Etsy shop in the description box underneath this one if you look for Thanksgiving quote and sun, with sunflower. So obviously that's just the black and white version of it. I love it. I love the look of it. That is stitched, if you see it uh, on the computer, in a light, obviously, fabric and color. I went, you, you know I went for the color. And so let's make sure I have it right. That's what it looks like. This is 18 count dive in from Bestitch Me. I just, I saw this blue when I got this. This was a fabric of the month earlier in the year. And I just, as soon as I saw it and then I saw this pattern, I, I wanted those colors all together. So I did more of the words, uh, uh, letters, I should say. I, I think I only have one full word. I did change that uh, color. It was charted in 310, and I changed it to 3371 just to have it more along the brown tones to go with the rest of it. And then I did more of the sunflower, and then I worked in the middle as well. So that's, that's where we are. I really love these colors together. I wasn't sure when I pulled the flosses, but on the fabric and together with the different parts, I think it's going to be beautiful when you get the full half of the flower going there with it. 
So that's where that is now. I know it's not really Thanksgiving colors, but obviously begin each day with a grateful heart. Makes me think of Thanksgiving. Uh, in November, sometimes people will do a month of gratitude. I try to do a day, every day, something every day uh, that I am thankful for. I try to think of something. Um, so I think this just works well for this time of year, for how I try to treat things, and so on and so forth. So I knew I wanted to stitch it when I saw it. So that's that one. Okay, next. Now this next piece is my 25-7 piece. So that was, uh, um, names, names always escape me when I need them. I can't remember who started it, but basically the idea is to pick, pick a piece and stitch on it for either 25 stitches or 25 minutes every day. And I've chosen to do this one until it's finished. Uh, I think I'm, I've seen people choose to do for a specific month and then maybe change it up, um, which is a great idea too, if you wanna get like a good amount of focus for a month, but it's not near a finish. This was close enough to a finish. I, I'm not, it's gonna take me a few more weeks, but um, I think, I'm really enjoying that idea of 25 seven because it feels like I am getting more progress than if I just stitched on it, say once during a stitch in session during the week. This little guy is my shamrock. Um, it's, uh, for those of you who knew, we lost shamrock this year. So this stitch makes me think of him and makes me smile. So this is a, a pattern from Wonderland, Ukraine. Uh, they are on Etsy, and again, I will link their shop below. You're going to see two of their pieces today. That gives you a spoiler alert if you're a regular friend. Um, all the colors are as charted. I didn't change anything there. Okay. And here he is. So this is an 18-count honeydew melon from To Die For Fabrics. I think it comes out, it's a little bit more true to its green here. And then we come forward. So I did quite a bit of him down here. A little bit, You obviously we're getting ready to do the eye. And I also did a bit here. I think one day I might've done some down there. There's the colors that are showing up here. They do show up in a few different places. So I have been sometimes jumping around. If I have a color out for one day, I may continue stitching it the next day, but in another section. So like I said, I'm close. I think it's gonna take me a, a couple weeks though. I don't think I can get all of that done in one week because there are so many color changes. I don't necessarily adhere to just 25 minutes to the minute, but I do generally stay, maybe, you know, I might do it a little bit longer if I'm watching you know, someone's floss tube, I might finish all the way through to the end, or if I'm watching a TV show or something or other, I may say, well, I'll just keep this for another, you know, 10, 15 minutes till whatever I'm watching ends, and then I'll put it away. So I can't say it's been strictly 25 minutes a day, but it hasn't been much more than that. And I'm super excited. You really do, you really do get more uh, accomplished than you think you might. I, <laughs> I bet you with my monochromatic piece, I could get that I could get that one done quite easily in 25 minutes a day because without color changes, you could zip along. But I just love this. I love the personality coming out. It. I really do think of Shamrock every time I see this piece. So that is, it's called Colorful Dog, I believe. If, if you... <laughs> If you've been on Etsy as a shopper or a seller for any amount of time, you know the whole algorithm for titles and, you know, putting a whole bunch of keywords and then should you do that with commas? Should you have short, shorter titles, longer titles? It was, a, it's for years, it's been a debate among sellers. I sold on Etsy for over 10 years. So I know one of, I believe one of the words happens to be colorful dog, but it's named a whole bunch of other things too, just because you know, you try to get in as much as you can in the title. 
keyword wise. But that's that one. So yes, you will continue to see this guy because he will continue through October to be my 25-7 until he's finished. I think I could get him done in October though, certainly. So that'd be fun. All righty, next. Next, next. So <laughs> for the next few weeks, if I continue with the moon, that's all you're going to see. I'm talking about Midnight Watch from Blackbird Designs. Sarah Stitches and I are stitching it together, and um, I know there's at least one other person. If you'd like to join us, there is a stitch along, and the hashtag is hashtag BBD Midnight Watch SAL. Feel free to join us. Now, Sarah and I are doing it a little bit different in the, in the fact that we're not stitching the alphabet or the border. We're basically stitching this part but I love to see any and all ways of stitching it. So jump on board and let me know if you're stitching it because I would love to see it. I am up here in the moon. What I chose to do, you know, 99% of the time I use DMCs and they very lovely uh, were wonderful in providing a DMC chart, alternative chart. And for the moon, and is that the only, I've said this before, I think. In the moon, I think is the only one where they do two different colors of DMC that they, they provide. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's what I did. So I, you know, one strand of each because on 18 count, I prefer to use two strands. It, it 18 count, 36 count, right there. They're very individual in what people happen to like for coverage. I know lots of 18 count stitchers who prefer one strand. For me, I've just always liked the two. Uh, so that's, I know I get asked that question quite a bit as well. Uh, for me, it's two, which makes these kind of things easy because I already do two. So while my moon won't have kind of those streaks, if you look at it from a distance and you look at it, you can tell there is... It's not just one straight color, and I'm really liking how it looks. I also changed the fabric <laughs> quite drastically. So this is 18 count Bewitched from To Die For Fabrics. And now I'm telling you, this got between four and 500 stitches of moon. That's it, of moon. And I don't know if the camera will pick up how easy it is to see. But if you really look at it, the two colors that you use are one is kind of a golden and one is a light yellow. And so in person, you can kind of see that variation just within the full moon. And I'm loving it. I did change. I don't have it written down at the moment. I think I talked about it last time. I did change the green because it wasn't showing up on my fabric. Any changes, though, I... Um, we'll put in the description box. And I have a friend that I know, I've, I, I know you've asked me about Betsy's Autumn and I need to check on that. I haven't forgotten on you. I promise, I promise. I need to look anyway because I wanna pull out Cinnamon Stars. So I gotta, I gotta figure it out myself. So you are on my mind and I, I, I do wanna ch check that. But I am gonna check, first place I'm gonna check because I haven't been as good writing things, some of those down in my book as I used to be. I've kind of consolidated. I used to write things in a couple different places and now it's in one. But I am going to check. I don't know if I put it in the description box because I made the change a long time ago before I picked Betsy up again. And what I should have done was check the, the bag before I put all the flosses away. But I will. Uh, but this will, this change, I'm almost sure it's already in the description box if you wanted to see what color I changed it to. I'm not sure I'll have to change anything else. I think that's it. So I have one more bat in the moon and then just full moon and then the house starts here. So for now, I think, well, I do have to stitch the bat, but I think I'm just going to keep concentrating on moon and get that closer to a finish and then concentrate on some of the other areas. So Sarah is doing it uh, not She's not doing it in a called for shade either, uh, but she's got, she's picked a beautiful color. So go check out her video. Uh, 
and you will get a chance to see what color she's chosen to stitch it on as well. Lots of fun. So that is Midnight Watch. Okay. All right, this guy got stitched this week, but this piece will probably get put away at this point um, because I think I would like to start a different one for October and my pumpkin birthday stitch along. But we're starting to see character now. It's not just hat and, and sunflowers. This pattern is Summer Gnome 2, so it's a set of three. Oh, let me show you. That would help, wouldn't it? Where are they? So first off, here's the three. You get all three when you get the pattern. And this is the one I'm stitching. You will see the hat colors are a bit deeper than what the computer is showing. But I am perfectly okay with that. So let's go back now to the piece. This is 18 count. It's an unnamed fabric. It did not have a name and it is from Coffee Crafts Fabrics. They are a group on Facebook. So if I come up close, we have a nose now. I'm super excited. And then the braids are, this is no joke. There's probably about five or six different shades. This is charted in DMC. And it's shades of ecru and light brown and beige. So you definitely have to pay attention. There might be a mistake or two there, but it's hair, right? So it doesn't really matter. So this side, except for this segment, but this side is almost done. And then I got a little bit of outline on this side. Here you're going to have actually, so here will be the hands. On either side, there'll be hands holding a sunflower. And I did a little bit of a start of that as well. So I did a good, I actually got good progress on this. But I love the fact that you can see the nose now. So now it has some character and it looks like something that not just a hat. <laughs> oh, I also, I got tired of looking at this poor sunflower. Oh, there's one stitch that I forgot to do. This sunflower, the center for ages, I hadn't finished it. So I did, I made a, an effort to go back and finish that too. <laughs> Kept thinking that poor thing up there. So I, I, I pulled out the colors and it helps because some of these colors here will now have been in those. So love it, love it. I'm not stitching the background, but I believe, and I, I, I will, I, 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 I'm reserving judgment in the fact that I, I could change my mind. The little kind of grounding circle, I think I'm going to stitch, but I think I'll wait and do that absolutely last, do everything else. And if I kind of like it the way it is, I'm not doing obviously this outer rectangle border. I might take that out too. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure, especially because there are several different designs and styles from Wonderland Ukraine of these gnomes that these will probably be scrapbooked. I don't necessarily see them out and about, but I would love to have them, especially if I do a whole bunch of them. It could be its almost own little scrapbook. Each, each set of three are very cool. Um, I think the next one I would stitch of these three, if I were to do the next one, is probably, I love the greens in this. So that would be my second choice. So we'll see. I have the autumn. I can't remember if I have the winter or if I just looked at it. I have the St. Patrick's Day one. So I have a bunch, whether or not I'll stitch all three of all these different designs, I'm not really sure. But they're there if I want to. I think too, once I see some of them finished, then it'll make a decision for me. So that's Summer Gnome 2, Wonderland Ukraine. All right. This one, it should be a finish. You're going to look at it and say, really, Laura? But I didn't start this till the end of my stitch week. And I just, I just didn't get it done. I am, this is... The Halloween, Halloween calendar. It's not like I don't say this every week. I'm a tiny modernist. 
and day 31 here. I know it's really tough to see the number on this one. The fabric I'm using, I think it'll come out fine. If not, I can change it. I wanted to get, this was the next color of the several that I'm stitching on. And I, I figured if I do it in the corner, it won't butt up against no, day 27. This is 18 count storm from Picture This Plus. Oh, let me fold that over that way too. And that's what I have so far. So really there's not much more left. I have to finish this lighter orange is on the inside of the B and around the B, the letter B. And then I just have the number 31. And like I said, I don't know, let me see if I have any others. Oh, it might work. So it's the same green as this day 19. That should work on there. So I probably will keep it. They do rotate in in the in the pattern itself. So I only have this is it for this piece of storm that I have. So <laughs> you can see this one might be a little dicey how I I put it in there for it's gonna be really tight on day 16 and that one. But um, I wanted to this was the next color up and I wanted to get it done on this. So we may do with the little teeny tiny corner. You don't want to keep seeing day three. So that's it. Next week, this will be a finish. I, I feel confident in saying that. <laughs> and then that will be the project done. I'll have stitched all 31 days. And like I said, uh, I think it was last week, I don't know exactly if I want to have a backing layer of fabric around them. Would I want that matching? Would I want it a solid of some sort? Um, you know, maybe like a two-tone solid or I, I don't know yet. So that will, that will mean I need to uh, figure that out before I can do these as a finish. I see them as small little ornaments, most likely. My other thought, especially now that I have that tree that I showed you last week, my other thought was to make them into some sort of banner. Um, again, they could be small like this. But I think with the tree now, I think I'd like that a little bit more. I reserve the right to change my mind though. <laughs> okay, next. So I had bought, this is one of my trading cards I'm doing. And I, again, I can usually get them done in a week, depending on when I start them. But this little guy just got started. It's, it's a quick, it's a very quick stitch. I'm not stitching all of it. So let me show you the full piece first. I picked up this, This I got it uh, from Etsy as a digital pattern. It's from Waxing Moon Designs and it's called Autumn Littles. So they have some of these. I don't know if they have all six of these autumn pieces as slightly bigger. You know how sometimes for the seasons they do three of something. And so they might have some of these bigger, but this was a set of six, <coughs> excuse me, uh, that I picked up and I thought they would be adorable, especially as trading cards. Uh, they could also be cute little ornaments too if you stitch them all up. I'm not stitching the border. Let me go to this piece and show you. I'm First one I started, I probably won't do all six, but I thought this little fox was cute. I'm not stitching that brown border. And I'm not sure if or how many of the leaves I will stitch because it depends on how I want to finish it. I may not want to have leaves stitched. I will stitch though down here. There'll be a little pile by the bottom of the rake and I'll do the little uh, grass that, that the fox is standing on. I am using the DMC, which I have to tell you for Waxing Moon, it's a little bit of a challenge because where they have the symbol, they show the floss, that's just the name of the variegated that they're using. So then you have to go to another list, look for that variegated name, and then they show you the DMC alternative. Why they couldn't put all three together, I don't know. But I guess it's, at least they offer the, the DMC chart and I don't have to go figure it out myself. But that's what that little guy's gonna look like. And you're gonna be shocked. He's actually on a neutral. I went through, my scraps. So what's really been fun about this project too, and a few times I have cut from bigger pieces of fabric, but I don't, you should have seen in the end how much, how much card stock scraps I had to get rid of when we moved. I had so many of them and I just couldn't take them with me. What was I going to do with them down here? 
well, I just, I use something and I think, oh, I might use that somehow or other. And I think the same thing with my fabric. When there's a little bit left, I'm like, oh, I might use it for something. Well, these trading cards are perfect for that. So I had a little bit of a, this was, this was back. So I started back to stitching in 2019, probably late summer, early autumn. And, you know, back then I was, I had been out of it for so long. I didn't even know what was available. But I happened to be watching that Housewives and they talked about coffee tea dyeing. I said, oh, I'll give it a try. And so I got a big piece of my Ada and I coffee tea dyed. And here is a scrap. So I thought, given that it's fall, these colors look really cute on that. They'll be, I did cut it close to this edge. I should have counted in a little bit more, but I, I got, that's all right. I mean, these are two and a half by three and a half pieces. So it's not exactly like, I, I probably will have too much on this edge anyway, because this side will probably be the two and a half side. So this is all of the DMC alternatives. I have these little cheeks to do. And then I have basically just the ground with some, you know, leaf scraps and the grass. And I think, I think that may be it. So this will also, I'm pretty darn sure this will be a finish next week too. Not a full finish because I need to think about how I want to finish. I might, I might see, I know there are leaf brads out there, whether or not I have any leaf brads, because that would be cute rather than stitching the leaves, use the brads um, to finish it off. But I don't know hundred percent. So we'll see. But the actual stitching, that's got to be a finish next week. I can't imagine it wouldn't be. Not unless I didn't stitch at all. All right. My last piece. Like I said, I touched a lot. Some of them didn't get tons of progress. And those two, which normally would probably have been finished, didn't get finished this week. But I pulled out, was it Wednesday? I think it was Wednesday. It'd be near the end of the week because I, I generally, I don't have them hard and fast in the order I stitch them, but I have them in the general way of how I stitch them in, over the course of a week. This is Hidden Harbor, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs, and the artwork is by Andy Russell. I love this one. I love the colors. I love everything about it. And like Paris, I started actually going across again. So I'm going to open it up full. So this again, this is the size. So this is not a mini, but it's not a huge regular size. This is 425 by 315. And that's its regular size as opposed to being slated as a mini. So it's not too bad. And then I am about... I just crossed the halfway mark. I might be a quarter of an inch, less than three inches on this side here. I may have slightly miscalculated, but for the most part, I'm almost there. So it'll be fine. I'm not really worried. But I did concentrate on adding more across this way. Now we're going, we're finally out of some of those blues and going into some of like the seafoam greens and lighter greens. And then I kind of, I jumped around a little bit. I only had a couple days worth, but I did decent uh, stitching. I stitched, you know, some of this blue and then I came down here and I think I even in the yellow might've gotten rid of any extra stray stitches because there are lots of little stray stitches and as I find that symbol, I'm trying to go back and grab those. In a few cases, I'm not sure if that symbol will be in other places, but as the other piece, 18 count, two strands, full cross over one. Wow, I just completely blanked out on that. This, these colors are beautiful. I think this week, I would like to continue to get more across here. We're now getting into more changes in color across the top. So I'd like to see that. And I think I will just mix and match. I don't think there's a specific section that you will see. I, I sort of ironed, but these things get scrunched up uh, as I fold them anyway. So 
uh, it's not a super great ironing job, <laughs> but um, I think it's going to be a surprise to you and me when we look at this next week where I am. And we'll see. We'll see. So that is the stitching for this week. Yay! Uh, given that I had several days where I really was not stitching, uh, I'm pleased. I'm pleased with the progress on that. Okay, plans. October is tomorrow and I am, I, there are a lot of October birthdays out there. So many of you mentioned that you have a birthday in October uh, coming up. So we're going to start off the month with a nice big happy birthday to all my October uh, friends that are stitching friends. I am October 23rd. So yes, on October 1st, I'm starting a little bit early celebrating, but that's okay. <laughs> that's all right. It can be a birthday month, right? Uh, and I am stitching on pieces that have something to do with pumpkin, whether it's actual pumpkins in there, whether it's the color pumpkin on floss or fabric or something that is relative to pumpkin. Um, it's, it's, it's very wide open. Uh, and th there is a stitch along. If you'd like to join, it is hashtag pumpkin birthday SAL. And like I said, it, 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 there's not a huge number of hard, fast rules. It doesn't have to be Halloween. It doesn't have to even be autumn. It it can be, you know, something that has maybe like a pumpkin-ish color in a spring or summer piece or something other. You know, you think about pumpkins with sunflowers. So maybe you have sunflowers in there. I don't, it's just to have some fun this month. So please feel free to join in and let me know. I want to see your stitching. I love, love, love seeing everybody stitching. Uh, that's my favorite part when you when you tell me what you're stitching and some of you have either Instagrams or videos and I can see them sometimes some of you will send me pictures which I love and sometimes I just look up the chart if I don't know it and and then I can just imagine what it's gonna look like so feel free to share I love it all right happy mail I got some happy mail this week super thankful of that I got a trading card from Georgie and I love I love it look at how adorable that is. I absolutely love it and it's perfect. I know you asked if it was okay and it is. It is absolutely perfect. Done just right. So thank you. This is going in my pile. I'm trying to figure out if I can display my trading cards. I can't yet. I'm looking around in my room. I'm just figuring out if there's a way I will be able to because I would love to be able to have these, I can put them, and if I can't display them, they'll go probably in, um, they're the size of baseball cards. So you can get baseball card holders, and that's how you can store your trading cards if you want. Because I don't want to put them in the scrapbook unless I made pockets, because I want to be able to take it out and see who it's from. So we'll see. But thank you, Georgie. I love it. And I promise as I get ones finished, I'm almost caught up um I will be sending out so if you sent me one you will get one from me okay and then I got this great card from Cindy I love it so we have everything nautical we have this side and then look at the back side I love it it's so cute I love that dolphin right there so cute Oh, I love it. So thank you so much. And I am on, I'm on it for the question that you asked. I'm doing a little bit of research with what I have and what you uh, showed me and I will let you know. Okay. I've got homework. <laughs> and then Colleen, thank you very much, sent me uh, a couple cards and a couple of patterns that I'll show you real quick. Colleen is a paper crafter as well as a stitcher. Um, and I don't know other, do you do other crafts as well, Colleen? You're so talented in, in both of these areas. First, this was Hello Sweet Friend. Isn't that beautiful? Lovely, lovely done. I love that. And what a great way to use the negative space. Sometimes when you do some of these word die cuts, then you've got to worry about gluing on, you know, not gluing on, but adhering all of the different letters and everything else. But putting the, the pattern paper behind the negative space is perfect. I love that. And then I love this technique too. 
And so she sent me a birthday card. And what's really neat with this one, these are scraps of, of, of patterned paper. And then you attach them and then you dry emboss them, right? Used an embossing folder? I'm pretty sure. I love that idea and I want to figure out how to use it as a technique for my trading cards. And I want to finish a trading card somehow or other with this and then have a stitched piece somehow with it. So thank you so much for that inspiration. And she had a couple duplicates and so she sent them on. One is August Nine Patch from Primrose Cottage. That is adorable. And this whole stitch count, which is shocking to me because it looks like it'd be bigger, is 39 by 39. So technically that entire stitched piece would fit on a trading card, 18 count wise. Probably, I'm not sure 16 it would, but something as high as 18 count it would. But I was thinking, wouldn't it be cute to maybe stitch a couple little pieces of it and add that. And then this is adorable. This is called Christmas Barn from Primrose Cottage. And this little guy would be adorable stitched on his own too. But I love that. Thank you so much. And then this last set of a happy mail. I'm not going to show everything, but I did want to show just a couple things. Um, this wonderful stitchy friend, thank you so much for your complete and utter generosity. I, I can't, you know, you know how much I appreciate it. Uh, and how you spoil me. <laughs> but then uh, this person has also been sending me uh, some magazines that they get in. You know, either they're, they haven't things in there that they would like to stitch or they've already stitched them. So we have the Cross Stitch Magazine, Just Cross Stitch from October 2022. And we have the Christmas Ornaments 2022. So this year's edition of that. And I have... I, I picked my favorite in each that I wanted to show you. First off, the cover of this is gorgeous. I feel, sorry, I feel like a sneeze is coming. Maybe not. I got that tickle in the nose. That is gorgeous. But I was super excited to see, especially given this week's giveaway. Look at this. From, yeah, that's just, okay. Frony Reader, Celtic Ball Trio. Those are perfect matches, design-wise, just obviously smaller versions, to the Celtic pumpkin I just got that I want to start this month. So I love, love, love this. Acorn, maple leaf, and gourd. I love it. So that is a definite that I want to pull out of that magazine. And then this actually, I really enjoyed, I'm going to make sure I cover up that part. Um, I really enjoyed flipping through this one. Actually, I sat outside with my, I think I had a cup of tea one morning. It was a bit brisk, but it felt really nice. And I did a really nice flip through of these two. And I wish the pictures were better in that, this one, I will say they have the, you know how they have the different sections, whatever, six or seven sections, and they show little pictures of them there. But then when you flip to the patterns, the pictures, some of them don't have another picture and some it's very, very small. So that was a little bit disappointing, but that's okay. They're small pieces, right? So you get kind of an idea, but my favorite, so there's quite a few here that I would like to stitch, but under the holiday critters section, I thought these two were super cute. I love this one. And this is number two, little stitcher Christmas love. Of course it's little stitcher. It looks like her design. She has a lot of different critters in her Etsy shop. And then I thought Christmas Woodpecker from Panuchka was kind of cool too. Especially maybe not stitching. I thought this would be kind of cute as a trading card. Maybe not stitching the stuff behind it. And that would be a lot of fun to maybe do some sort of background. Like if I were to stitch that, I'd probably cut around him after interfacing and then do something on the background. But there are lots of really cute ones in this magazine, I have to say. So um, sometimes you see more or less than, than other ones, but I have to say this one, I definitely saw quite a few. So thank you so much. I am super excited. And now, because I have these magazines, I might have to join Robin and Carolyn's monthly magazine challenge on Facebook. 
because now I'm stitching stuff from magazines. So why not join in, right? So Robin, you may see me there. Alrighty, that is my happy mail. And thank you so very, very much, everyone. I really do appreciate it. I have one piece of shopping. That's it. I actually got it yesterday. I didn't think I was going to have any shopping to show you, which is amazing, right? But I got this in the mail yesterday. It is my fabric of the month for September. So the mailman, usually Brandy sends at the end of the month, usually the last week of the month. But the mailman seems to take a little bit longer coming from her to me. And so I usually get it at the beginning of the following month. But we're actually still in September, surprising. Um, if you do not want to see, please look away. I'm assuming this is the name of it, which is kind of cute. So look away if you don't want to see. It's actually called Bestitch Me, <laughs> which is kind of fun. And I get the 18 count, Ada. And I do get, I'm in, I'm in the colors, not the neutrals. Isn't that pretty? So it is called Be Stitch Me. All right, let me put it down. All right, you can look back if you had. I always have to be careful that as I'm folding it back up that I don't accidentally show. <laughs> I am a, I am a all the spoilers kind of person. I, I don't mind surprises, you know, one way or the other, but I, I, I kind of like spoilers to be honest with you. So when somebody shows stuff, I'm like, Ooh, let me see. <laughs> As opposed to, Ooh, let me wait. No, I like to see it. I like to know what's going to happen at the, like, I, I need to be braced. If a movie's going to be sad or a book's going to be sad, I kind of need to know that before I, because I need to be in the right frame of mind. Um, I won't necessarily, if it's a mystery, I won't spoil myself and find out who did it. I'll like to try to figure that out. But a lot, I, but otherwise, I'm, I'm all about spoilers. <laughs> Alrighty, what do we have left? Oh, we have giveaway. All right, I'm not gonna take it out. Uh, and my, my copy is over there. So it, there's gonna be a slight glare. But this week's giveaway is the, what's the official title? Celtic Pumpkin Fall Series from Frony Ritter Designs. Isn't that cool? Love, love, love it. And I asked you just to do the number three in your comment. And I, I threw them in the bowl and I forgot. Usually I try to mix them around right after I throw them in. And I totally forgot today. I was so focused on just throwing them in. Oh, excuse me. Um, here we go. Who is, oh, I don't want to show that. Let me see what I have the picture to show. You know, I can show it on the top of this design. Okay, who's our winner? Colleen! Colleen Isaac, you won. Congratulations, Colleen. This is coming to you. All righty. Now, this week, we're still doing some more Halloween. Now, speaking of which, if you watch Sarah Stitches, you'll see her stitching this too, I believe. I'm 99% sure, Sarah, you're stitching this, right? I'm giving away Trick or Treat from Stitching with the Housewives. It has pumpkins if you'd like to do it as part of the pumpkin birthday sale, but you don't have to, obviously. So I am going to ask you... Because so many people like pumpkin spice sort of things, I'm asking you to say the word spice. So if you put the word spice in your comments somewhere, anywhere, uh, I will put your name in the giveaway list for next video. So that's, I think, do I have a version of this myself? I have some of the housewives. I bought kind of, sometimes I bought like a couple because I thought they would be good for giveaways and the like. Would I do it in black? I'm not sure because there are parts of the witch in purple. I'd have to think that I actually, the bewitch that I'm using for um, Midnight Watch would probably look really nice with this as well. I don't know. It's always so fun to say, would I stitch it in the called for or would I switch it up? So if you'd like to be uh, considered for the giveaway, please just say the word spice. All right, and we'll pick that next time. I'm going to put it in the bowl so that I know. And there we go. Okay. That's it. That's the stitching. Oh, and look at that. I did it before an hour, even though I had 
because I didn't have a lot of shopping. The shopping seems to take forever sometimes. Um, okay, so yes. So, oh, speaking of plans, by the way, too, I have at least one trading card that I am almost sure I know how I'm going to finish. So I might film a video, especially if I have a second one that I think I know how I'm going to fully finish. One is a bit more elaborate than the other. And I'm not actually, some of the stuff I already pre-did because you'd need things to dry. Um, but I could combine them in a video. One would not one would be super easy. It's just kind of layering. The other one has some product that would be fun to show. Um, so you might see a video with that. I also, I ordered some 12 by 12 uh, scrapbook paper because I would like to get Betsy's Autumn fully finished for my scrapbook. So... I have an idea of one more thing I want to do with that. So if I can get that kind of figured out, I like to always make the parts and then put things together. So there could be a scrap with me video somewhere along the line too. And generally what I'll do is I'd explain everything in those videos. And then as I'm finished, I may show them just as a finish on my regular floss tubes, but then you can always go back if you want to see supplies or techniques the few times I do techniques <laughs> um, in the video itself. It, that way it, it really gives you a chance to, um, every once in a while, like my rainbow fish, I just talked about it in the video uh, because once I put the beads on, there wasn't much to do with a, a finish with me video on, but we'll see. So those plans along with at least one pumpkin start, I think, I think my first one might be Carolyn's balloons. I love, love, love that pattern so much. I have the floss for it, and I think I've decided on that uh, kind of blue cloud-like fabric. So that might be what you see next week. But I have a very precarious pile I'm looking at of different ones that may or may not get started. So we'll see. There will be at least one pumpkin start for this uh, this week. So you'll have to see next week. All right, so that's all the stitching. If you are heading out, I hope you have a, a wonderful week and a safe week, depending on where you happen to be. All righty, so this this past week. Most of what I did was over last weekend. So like I said, Friday, um, I filmed and then, you know, that was just the day, whatever. But then Saturday, Sunday, and Mo took Monday off. He's got extra days he has to take or he's going to lose. So he took Monday off. And it was a glorious, beautiful weather weekend. Just absolutely the perfect kind of fall in between weather. And so it was just beautiful. On Saturday, we went into um, Lewis, Delaware. So if you, if you're in Delaware and Lewis and where I am, it's in the, it, Delaware is made of three counties, <coughs> the top one, the middle one, and the lower one, Sussex County is down at the bottom. And that's where the beaches generally are. As you go higher, you've got kind of, I assume it's a bay where New Jersey comes down, but the water still goes up. Um, and Lewis is where you actually get the ferry to go from Delaware to Cape May, New Jersey. Um, so that's, that's the town. And so Lewis is a very cute little town. If you've ever wanted to check it out, they have the beaches in one area, but then they also have, um, a little bit farther back, they have a cute, and it's, it's maybe two or three small streets, but it's very cute walking through with lots of fun little shops and, and there's restaurants and there's, a waterway uh, where, you know, you've got all the big boats and, and so on and so forth. So it's really nice. So we went there on uh, Saturday. Well, we, we were heading there and on the way there, we actually stopped at, there was a farmer's market going on. So we stopped there first, which was a lot of fun. We got some, it's called Mango Tango Jam. It's very, very good. <laughs> um, but we had fun just walking around because it was such a nice day. And then we went into Lewis and we did some shopping and looking around. So I moved down here full time in March of this year. And we had the house built for a little bit before that, but um, we just hadn't been full time. But when we sold our house in Connecticut, we moved here full. But uh, in the meantime, until I started living here full time, we hadn't really done decorating. We'd gotten the furniture and stuff and we're kind of very simple decorators. So when I say decorating, I, I mean pretty low key kind of stuff, but we had done really nothing. And like most said, it was time to start finding stuff for the walls and even just little 
not a lot of knickknacky things, but you know, a few things here or there. And so um, we went in and there's a wonderful shop in Lewis that has all sorts of different, you know, decor items and a lot of fun. I'm doing a lot of nautical because A, I like it and B, we're down here by the beach. So I thought, you know, that would be great. So we found some little items to put on tabletops and we found, did we find anything for the walls there? No, no, not there. Um, but uh, we found a lot of kind of little knickknacky things and so on and forth. So we're starting to, our house is starting to look a little bit more lived in. So we did that and we grabbed some lunch and we sat over by the uh, the waterway. We, we, we took the lunch to go, sat by the waterway. It was a beautiful day, ate outside. And then we were heading home and uh, it was like mid-afternoon and we were kind of like, let's just stop. There is a restaurant. It's more in Rehoboth. Uh, it's a brewery. And so we said, we're full, we're stuffed, but let's just grab a sit. They have a really fun outdoor area. They have tables for seating, but then they also have, which I think is open year round, um, a fire pit area, which you didn't really need, but they have Adirondack chairs and all that around there. And then they have like a cornhole set and they have bocce and some other stuff. So it's, you know, kids can do it or adults or whoever wants to have fun with it. Um, so we said, let's go. We grabbed a couple Adirondack chairs. It was a beautiful day, sat outside, had a quick, had a quick drink. And so that was our Saturday. Sunday was our actual anniversary and that one was pretty low key. I've been wanting to plant something in the window boxes. So we went and we got a whole bunch of mums and we planted mums and we got, our house is blue. So we got some nice bright yellow mums. I thought that was pretty. I didn't get any pumpkins yet. I'm always torn on when to put my pumpkins out because if, if you get that warm spell, the pumpkins don't make it to Halloween. They kind of start getting yucky. But if I wait too long, then it's kind of not worth it. So what, am I in the right spot? What do you think? Should I be getting my pumpkins about right now? Let me know what you think. I didn't get any, but that's on my list to do. And then um, Monday, so we really, like I said, low key on Sunday. And then Monday, uh, we weren't sure what we were gonna do, but we decided we would go south a little bit and we went down to Bethany, uh, which is farther uh, beyond. It's, it's pretty close. You have Bethany and then I think it's Fenwick Island and then you have Maryland. Um, so, and Bethany is another cute little town, you know, they have the beach and then there's a cute little area to walk around. And we found this store that had some beautiful paintings. Well, one was like a poster. Um, and so we got that and grabbed that and, and it was actually, it's a signed poster from the artist itself, which is kind of cool. And then we found some other paintings and things for the walls. So... Uh, we did quite well, I have to say, and it's just, it was a lot of fun to do a little bit of shopping with that. And then we, we were going to go, there is a Thai restaurant right over the border in Ocean City, Maryland, that has an entire vegan menu as well as their regular menu. And it, we had been there earlier when it was different owners, but they got taken over, but they kept the vegan menu. So we're like, oh, well, let's go there. Unfortunately, they didn't open till three. <laughs> So we went right, we went back up to Rehoboth and we tried a, I was on our drive back up, I was looking and searching and we found a really cute restaurant that has some vegan options. It's not completely, um, but what's really cool, it's a very small restaurant and then they had seating in front, which you could go in. But if you go to the side of it, they come back and there's sand on the ground and there's tables with the umbrella. So, cause it was a sunny day. And so we grabbed one of those and even though you're kind of in and among, it would be busier obviously in the summer, but it was really kind of quiet. And for the longest time, we were the only two out there than another people sat farther down and the food was quite good. And so I said to Mo, we, we did a lot of eating out <laughs> this weekend because we hardly ever eat out usually. But this weekend we just kind of went crazy and just ate out a, a lot. Um, but it was, it was, each day was beautiful and weather-wise and we got some fun shopping in and a chance to make our house a little bit more of a home, which was a lot of fun and some more ideas uh, of things to do a little bit farther. So I really, really enjoyed the weekend. That was my big activity uh, this week. 
uh, during the week. Otherwise, it's been pretty quiet. And uh, um, yeah, that's about it. So I did have a lovely week. Thank you so much for all the anniversary wishes. And um, we did. We, we had a great weekend and really, really enjoyed it. So um, that's good. And that's it. That's all I got. So I am uh, wishing all of you well, wherever you are and whatever adversity you may be facing at this point. Um, I'm, I'm just wishing you nothing but good things and hoping all is well. So as I always, I hope you're well, I hope you're safe and I hope you're getting some stitching time in. If you are like me, it is a way to release stress and just kind of relax a bit. So I hope you get a chance to do some of that as well. And until next time, happy stitching.